my clock just struck one o'clock. Do you want to go ahead and get started, Kibby? Sure. Let's do it. Cool. Well, good afternoon for those of you on the East Coast, and good morning if you're on the West Coast or somewhere in between. Uh, thanks for joining us for today's webinar, Thank You Videos and Other Visual Ways to Show Your Donors Love. My name is Stephen Shattuck. I'm the VP of Marketing here at Bloomerang, and I will be moderating uh, today's little discussion. Today I'm very uh, very happy to have Kibi Lure Miller joining us today. She's actually here live at Boomerang headquarters. It's something that hasn't happened before, uh, but we're really happy to have you here, Kibi. So thanks for uh, hanging out with us for about an hour or so. It's my pleasure. So uh, for those of you who don't know Kibi, which I doubt uh, that is true for anyone, but just in case, she is president of nonprofitmarketingguide.com, uh, which is a top-ranked blog on nonprofit communications. Uh, if you haven't read that blog, if you don't have it bookmarked, actually you should make it your home page. It's that good. You've got to check out her website. Um, she is the author of a couple books. One is The Nonprofit Marketing Guide. There is Content Marketing for Nonprofits, both of which we'll link to at the end of the presentation. Also very excellent books. Uh, she's a great writer. She's a certified executive coach. Uh, she trains coaches and consults with small nonprofits and uh, large nonprofits who have small communications departments. Uh, she helps that with marketing, communications, and fundraising. Uh, she's no stranger to webinars. She's an excellent speaker, and uh, all of you are in for quite a treat today. Uh, I've, I've peeked at the, a little bit of the content. It's going to be really, really great. So, Kibby, thanks again for being here. Uh, this should be a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, looking forward to it. So, what's going to happen is uh, I'm going to hand things off to Kibby really quickly here, and uh, then we're going to jump into a Q&A session. Uh, at the end. So as you're listening, feel free to chat questions our way. Uh, we'll see those. Both of us will see those. We may even take some as we go along. So do not be shy if there's something you want to ask her or have clarified. Um, and then we'll save some questions for the end as well. In case you have to leave early or get disconnected for some reason, I will be sending out uh, a recording uh, of the presentation a little later this afternoon. So you'll be able to relive uh, all of the content again and, and even show it to some of your staff members if you'd like to. So uh, I'm not going to take up any more time. Kitty, why don't you take it away? All right. I'm actually hearing a little bit of an echo, Stephen. I don't know if you have me on speaker anywhere, but now I'm not hearing it. So I think we're good. Okay. okay. So I think we're good. The first thing I want to do is ask all of you a question, which is, what is your number one question for me today about thank you videos or graphics? What brought you to this webinar? What do you want to know? I've certainly got a lot of stuff I want to tell you, but I want to make sure that it's really customized to answer your question. So let's just take a minute for you to fire in some questions to me. Don't worry about typos. No one's going to judge you for your typos. Just go ahead and send it in. So we have some questions about platform. You should all be able to see the questions, I believe. What's the best links? Can we use a cell phone to film them? Interested in doing other kinds of thank yous? What are some of the different tools for infographics? Video being complicated. I don't blame you, Mark. I'll quickly turn this around. Who should be featured? Okay, so good questions coming in. I want to tell you right off the top that I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the, the types of technology that you use to do this. I'm really focused on the content of the graphics and the videos. So for example, instead of talking about how a video was filmed or edited, what we're going to do is actually analyze the script the video. Because just like in Hollywood, if you want to get your project approved, you have to start with a good script. It's the same thing for you. If you want your video to work for you, it has to have a good script. So we're going to really focus on the content of your graphics and your videos, and not so much on the technology. But I am going to answer some of the questions by pointing you to other resources. So before we get into the real specifics, I need you all to remember that Graphics or videos are just another communications channel. It's just one other way for you to get your message out. So you really have to keep your basic marketing 101 questions in mind. That first question you want to always ask yourself is, who am I communicating to? So in this case, the question is, who are we thanking? Are we thanking individuals? Are we thanking our community at large? Are we just thanking the universe? Who are we thanking? And then what are, you know, what are we really thanking them for? What's that all about? 
On the Who side, here's an example um, for a sort of a video thank you campaign that Charity Water ran a couple of years ago. Charity Water does really good online marketing, and they love to do video. And they did a series of videos thanking different donors. So you can see from the screen capture that some of these are organizations, Silver Pop, for example. Some of them are individuals, Jody and Jimmy and Brian and Michelle. Some of them are larger members of their community. Thank you, bloggers. And they did all of these videos thanking all of these different people. So you can have multiple goals and multiple people you're thanking, but you want to think about it. You want to know if you're doing this for a particular human being versus a broader community. Here's an example of how uh, one organization, the Trust for Public Land, thanked individuals but did it in a very public way. And so this is what we call social proof. I see Elisa on made this contribution to TPL. And so I see that on Facebook and I think, oh, that's, you know, that's neat. Somebody's donating and look, they made her this cute little thank you graphic from an animal. Um, they didn't do this for every single donor, but they didn't need to. The fact that they did it for some donors uh, you know, was all they really needed to do. It's cute. It's fun. What it conveyed is that Trust for Public Land cares about its donors, makes a direct connection between the donors and the good work that they're doing. Join Elisa in helping to save the greater Yellowstone area. $38 saves a quarter acre. Okay, and they've run a number of campaigns like this to raise money to save different areas of land. Next, after who you want to talk to, you have to think about what's the message to them. So you know, the basic message here is, thank you. That's what we're talking about is thank you videos and graphics. However, there may be sort of more sophisticated elements to that message. Thank you for doing a certain thing. Thank you for sharing a certain value uh, by being a donor or a supporter. So you want to think that through. You know, what's, what's the real message besides just a core thank you message? Then the third question is, where is that message going to be shared? And in this case, we're talking about a visual format, but we don't just want to leave the visuals on YouTube, for example. The worst thing you can do is make a video and just leave it on YouTube. You want to make sure that you're embedding that video in other places, you're sharing that video, and you're really making sure that you're driving some of that traffic to YouTube yourself. Okay, so marketing questions, it doesn't matter what you're doing, you always want to answer these questions in your head. Who am I talking to? What's my message to them? And then what's the right communications channel to get that message to them? And video and visuals are no different. You need to keep going through those questions. So let's go ahead and jump right into video. What I'm going to do is share with you four different kinds of thank you videos that nonprofits are doing today. And I'll tell you a little bit about the video just in case those of you uh, haven't seen the links yet. We did send you some links for the videos on YouTube that you can watch. If you haven't watched them yet, it's okay because we're really going to focus on the scripts anyway. The scripts were one of the handouts that Stephen sent you as well. So if you've already printed that out, great, you can follow along. If you haven't, don't worry about it. I'm going to show it on screen and you can look at it later. So for video, um, there are some good resources out there for you. YouTube actually has a really strong program for nonprofits. And they have um, lots of tools for you. They have lots of help menus and educational videos that you can watch on how to make a good video. So that's a good place to start for those of you that are a little confused about how to actually do this. C3 is a consulting company that does a lot of work with video. They partner with YouTube on the Nonprofit Video Awards. And they also have a nice guide to nonprofit video. And a, they call it their guide for creators. And if you go to c3.com slash into focus, you'll get the, the information there. So again, another great resource for those of you looking to do this well. There are lots of tools out there to create video. Uh, if you just Google how to create an online video, you'll find them. Animoto is one that I like and a, a lot of nonprofits use. It allows you to take both still photographs and live video and to combine them 
and to do the, you know, the panning and the zooming in and all of that on still photos and add a soundtrack to it, add your text to it. Nice, easy user interface to put these things together. Okay, so I think those are all the resources I want to share with you. Let's go ahead and get into some of the videos. And I've actually put together a number of different playlists on YouTube. So in addition to the ones I'm going to talk about specifically today, there are lots of other thank you videos. I've grouped them by year just to keep the size manageable. So there's a 2013 nonprofit thank you videos playlist. So you can go to youtube.com slash kivielm to get to my playlists. And I encourage you to just sit there and watch a bunch of these videos. And take some notes to yourself about the ones you liked, what you liked about them, the things you didn't like. Um, I don't particularly like all of the videos in the playlist, but I wanted to have a, a good example, a range of examples for you so you can decide whether you like them or not. The ones I share with you today I actually do like, so you're going you're gonna to hear about my favorites today. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our first uh, type of video, type of thank you video. I'm calling this the thank you for model. Okay? And um, the first time I saw this done really well was with the Nature Conservancy in 2011. They did a video called Our Scientists Say Thanks. And I have the script in the script handout for you. I'm not going to actually um, look at that one today. I'm going to look at one that was modeled off of it. But they basically just say things like, thank you for helping us to protect the Gulf of Mexico. Thank you for supporting our work in the Utah's Canyonlands. Thank you for helping us to protect rivers and streams in Texas. And on each frame, there is a different scientist who works at TNC saying those things. And so what that allows you to do is see this great diversity of places that the Nature Conservancy helps save. You get to see this great diversity among their scientists. You get to hear their accents from all over the world, see the different way that they're dressed. You know, sometimes you hear birds in the background. Um, some of them look like geeky scientists. So it's a nice, fun, very authentic, real video. And I've showed it in a number of different conferences I've gone to over the years. And one organization that saw me present um, that video decided to basically copy the model, which is what I'm encouraging all of you to do today, is to copy these models. That's why we're talking about them. So uh, the Bray, the Archie Bray Foundation for Ceramic Arts, uh, copied this model. And I've got some screen captures here for you on the screen, just so um, those of you who saw it can remember which one it is. The Bray is a sort of a residency program for ceramic artists. And so it's a combination of the artists and the staff at the Bray who are saying thank you for these different elements. And what I'm going to do now is switch over to the PDF of the scripts. So hopefully that is coming up on your screen here. Like I said, Stephen sent you this. So um, you should have it. This first one is the, the Nature Conservancy one that we're going to skip over. And I'm going to show you the script for the Bray. Okay. So a couple things I want to point out here. This is two and a half minutes. That's on the long side, I would say. Generally, you want these videos to be one to two. If you're pushing it to three, uh, you know, you start to lose people. So you want to be really careful about that. As I said, you have different staff members and resident artists who are speaking to each of the following lines. Sorry about my sort of squiggly lines there. But it, you can see it follows the same sort of pattern. Thank you for giving me space to work. Thankful for the opportunity to be here. Thank you for your support enabling this and that. Then they've got the office dog. It's always cute to have you know, one or two of people be a little funny, like the dog with the sign. The Nature Conservancy one has a scuba diver underwater holding up a thank you sign for um, saving a coral reef, I think. Uh, so it's, it's so fun to have a, something a little unexpected. In this one, uh, again, they make it personal. I met my snow angel at the Bray. Thank you. And then they're holding hands and they fall down and make snow angels. So again, it's kind of light and cute and fun. And that's what you want these videos to be. They should not be like really heavy duty tear jerkers. These should be you know, nice, light, fun videos. Okay? And then you have the, the executive director doing a wrap up. The ED both opened the video and closed the video. 
So what do you think of this model? Is something that you might be able to pull off? Again, we're starting with an opening by the executive director, followed by maybe 10 to 12 people saying one thank you line, thank you for either helping, supporting, protecting. There's a lot of duplication of the verb there. And then after that, um, each person is saying something individual. Okay. Any sort of questions or thoughts on this one? I like to take questions as we go along. I think it's more interesting for both you and me that way. We had one from Terry that's pretty interesting, Kibby. Uh, Terry says, I have concerns about a donor's confidentiality. What's, what's your experience with that? It seems like you probably want to get their permission to be on video. Um, like if you include them in the video, then yeah. I th are, you, are you asking more about like the infographics where the person's name was used? I'm assuming that's probably where the question yeah, was really probably. coming from. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, I sort of I have two minds about that. So, on one level, I think yeah, it would be best to get their permission. However, if it's like a $25 donor and you're having, you know, a baby caribou say thank you on Facebook, I don't think that's really going to really make anybody mad at you. Um, you, it's not like you're making a huge fuss out of it. Um, I think it's fun and light. I think you probably have a little more leeway, and I think people will be sort of pleasantly surprised and excited about that kind of thing. And if they're not, you can always take it down. So, um, you know, it's like the the charity or the charity water videos when people made a video to say thank you to the individuals. I doubt that they called those individuals up and said, "Hey, is it okay if we make a thank you video?" They just did it and posted it, and you know, I think that's probably okay. But you know, if you're a little more risk adverse than I am, then get permission. Okay, let's see. Catherine, I saw your comment about the tearjerker, and I absolutely believe that tearjerker, I'm not, po I'm not pr against tearjerker videos, let me put it that way. But for thank you videos in particular, I think it's nice for it to be a little more on the upbeat side. Um, and you know, upbeat things can make people weepy too, so that's fine. But the more sort of traditional tearjerker can definitely work well for other purposes in your communications and fundraising strategy. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to our next model. So now I need to go back to my slides. And our next model is the because of you, I am able to do this thing. So first person accomplishment. This is going to work for those of you that do direct service work, where the people you help you see every day, and it's very clear who that clientele is, you know, very sort of on the ground, grassroots, direct service. This is not going to work as well for those of you that don't do that. I think you can still make it work, but you've got to be a little more creative. So the example that I'm showing you here is um, one of the arcs, and I'm forgetting which one it is right at this moment. Let me find my list. Okay, this is the arc of the U.S., so it's the national one as opposed to one of the state or local ones. And so what they did in this video is there's no voiceover. It's music. And instead what you see are individual clients of the ARC holding up the little whiteboards with their first person messages. I think almost all of them are first person. Um, and so again, what I'm going to do is now flip back over to the scripts. Here we go. Okay, so in this one, you can see how short this is. Look how much text this really is. So again, when I'm talking about doing the script, this is your job. This is what you're trying to figure out. Okay, so the person who did this didn't just willy-nilly tell people to write things on a whiteboard and throw it all together. Some thought went into, again, what that message is and making sure that the message is consistent. It says something you want people to remember. Not everybody wrote the exact same thing on the whiteboard. You know, the order that the messages were in uh, was orchestrated in terms of how the thing was edited together. 
So you've got to put some thought into this. Okay? Now on the screen it says, we want to offer you our thanks in just regular text. And then we have a bunch of the clients holding up the whiteboards. And again, I mean, this is really kind of poetic when you read it. Because of you, I live in my own apartment. I've been happily married for six years. I can work. Because of you, I educate my community about disability. I work to end bullying. I get to do what I love. I'm a better speaker. I found a job. I serve my community. I have a job I love. I'm a powerful advocate. Thank you. This is really powerful. And you know, it is almost a tearjerker. And for some members of this community, it probably was a big tearjerker. So, and it's so simple and so easy to do. So again, sometimes the production values of getting people's voices uh, is a challenge. And don't do it. Do signage like this instead. Have them hold up something. Um, if you're, for example, if you have locations all over the country and you are not confident in the ability of all your different field staff to get high quality audio on their phones and you're, you're afraid it's going to be a nightmare and really inconsistent, don't worry about it. Do something like this where you then put a soundtrack over it and you don't have to worry about any of that audio quality. So what do you think about this one? Let's hear some, some, get some feedback about this. Any questions about this? How, how might some of you see yourself following this model from the ARC? Share some examples of maybe who could hold up your signs, what they might put on those signs. Again, this one was only a minute long. So for all of these, I'm saying a minute to two minutes is really your sweet spot. Start Lisa. You're looking forward to using it. That's great, simple, and sweet. I thought it was one, um, I'm trying to read these before they disappear off the screen. A number of you are saying that it's effective, emotionally powerful. I really love this one too. And um, you know, I thought it was very powerful for the organization in terms of what they do and its messaging. And I also just loved it because production values were so easy to copy. And that's, that's really sort of my criteria because I'm always looking for things that I can share in trainings like this one. And so whenever I see something, it's like, ah, people could do that, people could copy it, then I really love it too. A uh, number of you, are, you need to make sure that you get the right music. And I would encourage you to pick things again that are a little more upbeat. When you listen to the different videos that are in those playlists I created for you, you'll see that some of them have that kind of slow, sort of sappy music. And I don't know, I just don't feel like it has the same energy that some of the others that have music that is a little more upbeat um, have to them. So music is really important. It's the only thing that people hear. And I would really experiment with that. And for those of you that are like, where do I get music? If you just Google royalty-free music, you can get a bunch of sites that have music for cheap or free. It's really not that expensive to get decent music. You may have to sit there and listen to 50 or 60 clips until you find the one you want, but you can do it um, pretty quickly and easily. Um, Lainey is emphasizing, yes, you do not want to violate people's copyright. So that's why I'm saying you want to Google royalty-free music. That means that you're allowed to use it. Um, the person you're getting it from usually has cut that deal. And so you're, the, you're sort of paying the go-between when you go to those world music websites. I think that's the easiest way to do it. I'm all about easy. Okay, let's go back to the deck and look at our next one. Give me a while. It's not bringing me back to where I was, so I'm having to scroll to find where I was. Okay. So the next model we're going to look at is multiple readers. Okay, so multiple voices, multiple people on screen with key phrase repetition. This goes back to the idea of you knowing what you want to say. What is your message? Again, remember you're, you're focusing on your three key marketing messages at all times. Who am I doing this for? 
what's my message to them, and then how am I delivering that message. So with this one, you really need to think about what that repetition is. Okay, and I've got a couple examples for you in the strip. There's one, there's one girl zinc right here in Indianapolis. I actually didn't realize that until just now. Um, and they have a bunch of young girls who they serve standing up and repeating a number of phrases. So I won't read the whole thing for you, but just to give you a sense for what I'm talking about. One girl says, thanks for your support. Another says, thousands of greater Indianapolis girls like me. And then another, like me. And another, like me, are participating in Girls, Inc. programs and learning what we are capable of. We are capable of, okay? So what happens is they've basically written one paragraph. They've had, I don't know, I think there are maybe 15 different girls in the video reading that entire paragraph, and then they've edited it, it together. So the 15 girls are saying the one paragraph, but there are key phrases that we hear multiple times out of multiple girls' mouths. So, so thanks to you, thanks to you, thanks to you is repeated by, I'd say, over half of the girls are uttering that phrase. And there's also some repetition later in the video, the words smart, strong, strong and bold, 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 bold are repeated as well. And that's on a purpose. That's going back to the core mission of Girls, Inc., which is to really make girls feel like they are smart, bold in the world and can be leaders and decision makers. So again, you need to think about that. What is going to be a key phrase repetition? The other one I want to talk about is another Nature Conservancy video. Uh, Nature Conservancy used the Scientist Say Thanks video for I think two or three years in a row. These typically come, around, come out around Thanksgiving. And they used that one at least twice and I think maybe three years. And then they decided to do a new one. Okay, so this was a, a more recent one. This is the 2012 version. And uh, they sort of did this model where we have some repetition of the concepts. So again, let's flip back over to our script. Here is the Girls, Inc. one I was talking about. Then we get to the Nature Conservancy. So at the beginning, uh, again, we have maybe 10 or 12 people speaking. And they're talking about the weather. So hot, sunny, chilly, rainy, hot and dry, wet, la 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 la. No matter where you are, no matter what your weather is, this is where we start to get into the core messaging. The Nature Conservancy is protecting some of the most beautiful places. Okay, and it's this places word that they've chosen as their their key word that they're going to repeat. Amazing places, cool places, drop dead gorgeous places, pristine, da 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 da. Places that ensure we have fresh water to drink. Places to breathe clean air. Places to provide a home for wildlife. Places we can protect. Places we will protect thanks to people like you. Okay, so we have that repetition of the weather all around the world, which um, is a subtle nod to climate change. I think they don't really come out and talk directly about climate change, but that's certainly a big issue of concern for them. And then they repeat this idea of all the places. And then you can see they close with the word thank you in I think six or seven different languages. So again, it's that key message repetition among a number of different voices. So what do you think about this one? What do you think about model number three? How could you make this one work for you? I see a bunch of you typing. Uh, Ava says, what about doing an ask at the end? You know, I kind of prefer these to be um, more of the soft ask if you're going to do an ask. You know, there's a lot of debate in our community, development community, about whether you ask in a thank you. And you know, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's appropriate and sometimes it's not. So I don't think there's any super hard and fast rule. I kind of come down on asking less in thank yous than asking more, but that's just sort of my personal preference. Uh, so you know, I think you can definitely have the donate URL at the end of the video, but I wouldn't necessarily have someone come on screen and say, give now. I think that's a different video.
reading some of the comments here. Um, Emily says, I worry that this overused and may seem generic unless it is executed well. You know, I, I hear your, your concern, Emily, but at the same time, what I would say is that is, is um, following this kind of stuff as much as we are professionals. I think lots of times, you know, we are in marketing and, and fundraising, we are really in tune to what other people are doing, and so we get concerned about things getting trite more quickly than they actually do sometimes. Um, so if it's not something that you've tried with your community before, and it's not something that's you know ultra trendy. I mean, you know, some of the internet memes you definitely have to do it on time, otherwise you do kind of look like a fool. But for this kind of thing, I think, I think most of these are going to be pretty long lived. I think these formats you could you could give them a try. Okay, let's go ahead and look at our last version. And let me just flip back one more time for those of you that didn't see the video so you have a little bit of a clue about what we're talking about here today. Okay, so this one is the, the, the last one and in some ways the easiest really. It's, it's your physically spelling out the words thank you. And again, I have another example for you from the Bray. Um, the Bray is a really small organization. They have uh, Rachel, their communications director, was also their program director until recently. And so she, they have a separate development team, so she had help there. But you know, she's got a lot of other stuff going on. It's not like she's making videos full time or anything. So they were thinking, okay, what else could we do? Well, we make things here at the Bray, so let's actually make the word thank you. And so the video shows the different artists creating the letters and putting the letters together, and then at the end they take them out of the kiln and they're all kind of standing there holding it. And then we hear them actually say thank you out loud. The construction of the letters uh, has music over it. And again, it's sort of, it's, it's sped up video, so it's got this kind of fast paced music as well. And let's see, let me flip back over one more time. And here you go. So on the Bray, you know, we, there is this spoken intro about thanking you for your support. We can do this without you. We wanted to say thanks in the best way that we know how. And again, because they are a ceramics place, um, then we see this time lapse video with them building the word thank you. Okay. So what's a way that you could physically form the letters of thank you? Who could be in that video? What could your letters be made out of? Anybody have any creative ideas for how they could put this one to work for them? Diane says, student dancers. Yeah, I like that. That's great. Anytime you have kids, you have plenty to work with. <laughs> they can use their bodies. They can you know, make art. So there's all kinds of fun stuff um, that you can, you can capitalize on with creative young minds. You can make them out of school supplies, says Leslie. Uh, Daniel, how about an organization that deals with kids and addiction? So you know, sometimes there are a lot of you who can use your clients in videos, like Eric did, and there are others of you who cannot for a variety of reasons. And you know, I just think it means you have to be a little more creative about it. And um, maybe you don't make the thank yous out of with people. Maybe you find a metaphor for the hope or um, the security that you're giving your clients. And you come up with it, you know, form the letters in some other way. I just think you have to, you know, have some fun with it. Okay, I'm going to flip back over to the slide. We are done with the flipping back and forth. We're just going to stay in the presentation now. So let me find where we were.
Okay, so quick summary. In your handouts you have a longer do's and don'ts for both video and infographics. But here are just a few points from the video. You want to think about what we're seeing and what we're hearing. The audio on video is in some ways more important than what we see. Okay, people are more forgiving of a visual that is out of focus than they're forgiving of really bad audio quality on a video. So you want to think about that. And I'm not saying you can shoot a bunch of blurred videos and you know, put those online all the time. But you want to pay attention to the audio. Bad audio is more annoying than bad visuals. And again, if you, for whatever reason, are just going to have too much trouble getting the audio quality right, then strip it off and just throw on some music. Or have somebody record a voiceover in a really quiet room and put that on instead of using the audio that's native within the video that you took. You want to keep it to one minute, I think two tops. And like I said, I believe for thank you videos in particular, that's what we're talking about today, the upbeat music and pace is really a must. I think the slower stuff just does not produce the same kind of happy energy that you want to create for your donors about the good work that they've made possible. There are other kinds of videos where I think that um, slower, sadder pace, you know, the, the classic is those videos with ASPCA, with the sad dogs and the sad Sarah McLaughlin music. Those videos rake in a ton of money for ASPCA, and they are just sad and mopey, and they work. Okay? But that's not what I'm talking about today. I'm not talking about a video that's raising money. I'm talking about a video that's saying thank you for giving the money. And the ASPCA thank you videos are happy wagging tails and happy kitties and puppies. Okay, they're much more upbeat. It's fine to combine still photography and live videos. So if you don't have live, don't worry about it. Like I said, you can use something like Animoto to put together something that looks great based off of photography. And also think about using multiple voices. Uh, you know, sometimes it's nice to have the opening and the closing be the same person like we've seen some of the executive directors. Um, but having different voices keeps people interested. It keeps them more engaged than listening to someone drone on like I am on this webinar for an hour. No one wants to listen to that. Okay. Any questions about video? We're going to move on to uh, infographics. But before I leave that, leave video, I just want to see if we have any final questions about video. I'm going to take a sip of tea here. So. Type for a minute. Roxanne has shared a resource for digital music. Please, if you've got favorite websites, favorite sources of, um, there is such a thing as stock video and music, feel free to share those in the chat with each other. Lynn says, how do we let people know about the video? So this goes back to you want to think about who you're trying to reach and why you're trying to reach them. Sometimes you want to just make sure that the people who attended a certain fundraiser or responded to a certain campaign get about it um, or hear about your video, see your video. So in that case it would be more of a targeted send, usually via email and social media. Um, you can certainly tell people via print about your video and give them a link to it, but typically a place where people can click directly to the video is going to be the better way to go. So you're going to want to think about who should get it via email and um, sharing it in your social media channels. When you send it via email, what I recommend you do is take a screen capture of the video, including like the little player buttons, and actually embed that graphic into your email just like you would embed any other picture. And people will click on the graphic and then that will either take them to your website or take them directly to YouTube depending on what you pick. What you make is the link on that video um, screen capture. And they'll actually go watch it there. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to infographics. So I have uh, created a board at Pinterest. There aren't a ton of examples on that board right now, um, in part because I've just sort of slacked off. So I need to go be actively on the hunt. And if you find 
good examples that you think should be in this collection, please by all means let me know and we'll add them. But we do have a Pinterest board and encourage you to, to check that out. Here are some examples that I thought were particularly cute. So this is a paper thank you card that is being um, sent out to different donors. And then what they also did is uploaded that thank you card as a graphic to say thank you to everybody who gave. So everyone in the organization signed it. Um, and you know, it's just a cute picture of a dog with a thank you note. I mean, how can you go wrong there, right? So if you've got cute people or <laughs> cute animals to take pictures of, then you definitely uh, have a little easier job than some of your colleagues who do not have cute kittens and puppies and kids. Um, so stop complaining if you do, because it's, your job is a little easier. But there are other ways to do this too. So again, we talked about the Trust for Public Land. Um, and you know, here's a picture that doesn't even have the moose in it. Matt Pearson donated $38, now a quarter acre of the Hoback is safe. So if you have anything you can take pictures of, even if it's not living and breathing, just the environment, that's fine too. Uh, you know, here we have another version of that, the baby moose thanking Hillary. It's cute. Again, I don't think Matt or Hillary probably were upset about this. They probably thought it was really fun and enjoyed it and wanted to share it with their friends. That's typically the reaction that people have to this kind of stuff. Here is more of a sort of generic thank you to all of our donors. Where the, the previous examples were a little more specific. This is more of an infographic. Seven amazing things donors have made possible. And then we've got the little factoids. Of course, we've got the cute kid with her fingers in the heart shape. That's a nice touch too. But it's really trying to express to donors the good work that they make possible in this infographic form. Here's another approach to this. Um, this is actually an interactive mini website that the Humane Society of the United States did. So the screen capture that I have here, they've used that graphic itself independently. You're making a stand from millions of suffering animals to them and to us, you are a hero, thank you. So this in and of itself has been shared in lots of different ways. But if you actually were to click over to the site, you would be able to uh, hover over, they have a larger version of their logo, this thing, down below the graphic. And as you hover over each of the animals, uh, a, like an extra box pops up, pops up with more videos and more factoids about what donors have made possible to help animals. So you can get pretty interactive with these things. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's just really up to your imagination. So a few quick pointers on the infographics. Uh, gratitude at a glance is your goal. People are looking at these graphics very quickly. For the most part, these are on social media. They can also be embedded into your website and into email, just like we talked about with the video. But these are nice to uh, be shared and to encourage people to share them. So that means people are looking at them very quickly. So we want that thank you to the donors to really pop. We don't want people to have to actually read too much. I would build the, the graphic thank yous into your campaign plan from the start. So think about what you're fundraising for, about ways that you can share your gratitude as you're fundraising. So you know the, the Trust for Public Land examples with the animals thanking the $38 donors is a great example of that. Those things were posted as the campaign was happening. It wasn't just at the very end. And again, that's what we call social proof. Oh, other people are doing it. I guess it's okay for me to do it too. You want to encourage that kind of behavior. It's the same concept between those thermometers that a lot of people use for fundraising goals. Oh, other people got the, th you know, the thermometer up to 75%. I guess I can give too. Okay, that's another version of social proof. So build these things into your campaign from the start. If you're going to do a full infographic, and we have more Pinterest boards um, on bigger infographics, you want to make sure that you give the eye a path to follow. 
So, you know, for example, on this little one I showed you, it's very linear. Oh, it's seven things, and I can read straight down the sentence. Lots of times when we get infographics, there's no, there are numbers everywhere, and it's just this sort of hot mess. And it's hard to know what you're supposed to look at. So you want to be careful and try to avoid that and really make sure that people can see it, you know, really see the message. If you crowd it up, they're not going to be able to see it. Okay. Again, those are just a couple of quick pointers. You have handouts that have a more complete sort of do's and don'ts list. So check those out as well. And at this point, I'm happy to take any additional questions that you have. We're at the end of the formal presentation. So let's hear your questions and your suggestions and how you would put some of this to work. Yeah, cool. That was great, Tibby. And uh, thanks to everyone who was asking questions as we went along. It was fun to have this kind of interactive. Um, so that was great. So yeah, we do have about probably 10, 10 or 12 minutes for questions. So if you were maybe sitting on your hands or uh, didn't get to, to ask as we were going along, please do ask, ask away. We've got Kibby here. She's an expert. She's at your disposal uh, for the next 12 minutes or so. And David, I will be, I will be sending out the handouts that she uh, reference a little later on. Everyone listening will get all those materials. Um, looks like we've got a point from Judy here, Kevy. It says, is it important to put the amount that someone has given uh, as part of that social proof concept? Would you include the dollar amount also? You know, I think it depends. On the smaller dollar um, social campaigns, I would, where it's, where you're really trying to do sort of the crowdfunding effect. Um, the, the dollar amount is a signal to other people about what you consider an appropriate gift size. And so especially in, in social fundraising, you're typically dealing with smaller dollar amounts. And um, you want to sort of let people know what that right ballpark is. Now when you start to get into higher dollar donations and you start to do more individual video creations, like some of the charity how-to, um, sorry, charity water videos. Uh, some of those include the dollar amount and some don't. So for example, some of the ones um, that were thanks to corporations where it was sort of a, a st full staff effort, the whole organization donated a certain amount. That is common to include the dollar amount. In those cases, when you're thanking an individual donor who maybe gave $500, you know, I would probably lean against using the dollar amount at that point. So again, I think it's a judgment call, knowing sort of what the culture is with your donors about that sort of thing. But the, the smaller, more sort of crowdfunding, social fundraising, I would probably lean towards using the dollar amount. What do you think about uh, super short form videos like Instagram and Vine? Uh, Aaron was wondering about those. I think those are great. You know, any I encourage you to experiment and play around with this. I mean, don't wait until you've got it all figured out because by the time you've got that all figured out, people are going to be on to something else. So, you know, we are living in a very fast media environment now. And you really can't afford to just sit on your hand and wait until you have everything perfect and figured out. So you know, play around with it. Um, I know an organization that thanks major donors with custom videos. It happens to be an organization that helps kids do different after school camps and summer camps. So they have the benefit of having great kids uh, you know, who can goof around in the videos, but they do custom videos for their major donors where the kids actually get on video and say, thank you Mr. and Mrs. Smith for making it possible for me to come to camp this summer. You know, and it's adorable. And you can bet those donors are watching those things over and over and loving it. So you know, I, just, I think you have to just create and be willing to play around with it and see what works. What about cost? Kibbe, we've had you know some of the examples that you showed, um, you know, from Girls Inc. and from Arc. How much do you think those videos actually cost? And what kind of budget should people put aside for things like these? 
You know, it's so hard to say because it depends on what market you're in. Honestly, those of you that live in bigger cities are going to end up paying more, but you also probably have access to more people that are also uh, willing to cut you a deal and maybe even willing to work for free. So I think it's hard to say. For these short videos, you know, it's not a lot. It's probably more than hundreds, but it's not a lot of thousands. You know, when you start to get into the longer form videos where there's a tons of editing and lots of original video where the crew have to come out and take all the video, that's where it gets expensive. If you can really take the original video yourself and then give it all to someone who really edits it and cleans it up for you, you're going to be better off and you're going to be able to get that done in a much more affordable way. Cool. If, if got, it, uh, where, where it gets expensive is where you're paying people to come out and film. That's where the price can go through the roof. So if you can do some of that ahead of time and really just pay for the editing and the cleanup, that's better. Great. Um, Jerry here is wondering, Jerry's got a major campaign done through special contributions uh, in churches. Uh, Jerry's wondering, how do you do a quick response thank you to the church as a whole? Any ideas for them? And I'm assuming you have multiple churches. Is that the idea? Yeah. Sounds like it. Okay. You know, you can do something where the first 10 to 15 seconds of the video is customized for that congregation where you actually, hey, church of whatever you are, you know, you say their name and then you throw it on another minute and a half that's the same thing that every church sees that's more mm -hmm. about the results. I mean, you want these videos, if you look back and you look at these scripts, there's a lot of results and progress in these videos. It's not, they're not saying, thank you for giving us money. Right? None of them are saying that. They're saying, thank you for improving our lives. Thank you for saving these places. It's all about the results that the donors created. That's what people are being thanked for. So, you know, in that situation, you can probably reuse that part of the video over and over and over and just change the beginning to customize it. Yeah, that makes sense. And it's personalized that way. So if you're shooting your own video, Kevy, um, do you need pro equipment? Lynn, Lynn, Lynn here is uh, asking about equipment. Can you do this on your iPhone? Do you need to go out and buy yeah. an expensive camcorder? No. You can do it on your, if you have a if you have a smartphone that's not like really old. I mean, if it's if you got in the last couple of years, then you you're fine. You have everything that you need to be able to do this. Now you need to know how to use your phone. <laughs> so you want to spend a few minutes understanding where the settings are. A lot of them have settings especially for the lighting and the audio that can be very helpful. If you're going to upgrade anything, I would get a mic to plug in to your, they usually plug into like the little headset part of your mm -hmm. phone. And an external mic can do a better job of capturing the audio than what your phone will often capture. And again, like I said earlier, people are more annoyed by bad audio quality than they are annoyed by picture quality. So that's where it might make some sense to spend 100 bucks to get a decent mic that you would then plug into the phone to capture the audio. And then what you do is that that's recorded in a different track. You, you'll have an app on your phone that records the audio for you. And then you'll have to go into some software and sync that audio track that you recorded with the microphone to the video track. And you can do that yourself, or that's again where you can pay somebody else to do that editing if that's a little too scary for you. Cool. Well, we've got probably about uh, one more question. Time for one more question. So I'll uh, I'll answer the the one the next question I see. Uh, has <laughs> um, but I want to give lottery give time. Kibbe, yeah, this is serious. I want to give Kibby some time uh, to talk about where you can find out more about her. Oh, we got one from Scott. What about software? Um, so if you want to tackle editing yourself, um, any uh, any tools for that that you can think of? 
You know, that's a landmine of a question. Like, you know, everybody's <laughs> got their favorite piece of software. So, you know, it depends on whether you're a Mac person or a PC person. So, um, you know, I personally, I'm on a PC. I, I use Camtasia mm -hmm. Studio, mm -hmm. and it's fine. I, it, it's, I think it's a middle-of-the-road kind of tool. It's not super basic because I need to do a couple of little flashy things that I like to do, but it's not like the super high quality professional hundreds of bells and whistles either where it's so complicated that I can't figure out what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for me that works, but you need to find the thing that works for you and your type of computer. The, I, the iMovie on, on Macs is pretty good. That's what I use personally. It's not too bad, and I think it comes with all, there you all go. the Macs too. Yeah. Well, cool. This is really fun. This has been really helpful. I, uh, I, I really enjoyed listening to this and uh, looking at all those examples. Hopefully everyone else did who listened in. And Kibby, I think you broke our attendance record for a webinar, so congratulations on that. <laughs> well, thank you all for being here today. Yeah, this is fun. I, I want to give you the last word. Where can people find out more about you, uh, find your books, read your blog, follow you on Twitter, all that good stuff? Sure. So nonprofitmarketingguide.com is our website. And it's a, it's a regular website with lots of downloads and articles. And then we also have the blog. So that's nonprofitmarketingguide.com slash blog. We blog Monday through Friday. So you can subscribe to that if you want to hear from us every day in your inbox. If that's not for you, we also have a weekly e-newsletter, and we'll often link to, to the better stuff on the blog, so you can do that as well. And um, if you go to nonprofitmarketingguide.com and look for the freebies link, there will be a sign up for the newsletter and for a bunch of free e-books, all kinds of good stuff. And then, of course, we have the two books that I've written to. For those of you that want the handbook on your desk, we've got a couple of those as well. And Amazon has them for just about the best price. Amazon actually gets the prices and I can sell them to you for as the author. <laughs> so um, yeah, check it out. We'd love to hear from you. And of course, follow us on social media. Yeah, definitely do that. And do check out that newsletter. I recommend everyone subscribe and check out that blog. Really, really good content. If you liked anything at all that you saw in this presentation, you're going to get that uh, there as well. And I do have content marketing for nonprofits. Really excellent. As soon as this webinar ends, KB, I've got to get you to sign up. <laughs> um, I, everyone needs to go and buy I'll that. Really good. It's thick too, so it's definitely worth whatever it is. It is. It's um, <laughs> it's a tome. I mean, I could I could not sit down and read my own books in one sitting. So um, it's a function of the publisher. Josie Bath Wiley really likes to create these handbooks, all inclusive handbooks. So they're they're big books, um, and you can definitely flip through them and just read the part you need to read. Yep, it's really good. I think everyone should buy it. So that's my recommendation. <laughs> well, this was a lot of fun. We do do these webinars once a week. We're actually taking next week off. Uh, but one of us, actually me, I'm going to be presenting on the Nonprofit Hub webinar next week. So go to our webinar page. You can register for that. I'm going to be talking social media uh, for nonprofits next week. And then beyond that, lots of cool uh, uh, topics coming up uh, here in the future. We're going to talk strategic planning, um, things like that. So check out our webinar page. Look at the upcoming webinars. You can register for those uh, for free. They are 100% free and 100% educational. So if you see any topics that look interesting to you, please do register uh, and you can attend those. Um, so Kevi, thanks again. This was great. I'm going to be sending out all the materials here later this afternoon. So look for an email from me. Uh, you'll get the recording. You'll get all the uh, handouts that we referenced today. Um, so look for that. And with that, I'm going to say a final goodbye. So thanks again for uh, hanging out with us, everyone. And we will talk to you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>